Hey guys, what's up? My name is Leon, and in this video, I want to talk about the 10 reasons why the GT is better than a Vesk. Vesk has been getting a lot of attention recently, especially for people that compare it directly to a GT and just point out all the performance benefits, but the GT is still an amazing board. And here are 10 reasons that uh, people don't give the GT enough credits for. So the first reason is the GT is the best out-of-the-box experience one wheel that you can get. XR, XR is great. Um, a used XR is probably the best deal you can find, but an out-of-the-box XR rides like shit. If you don't put an aftermarket tire on it, and that's not something that you can easily do by yourself if you don't know if you're a new rider and don't know what you're doing. Um, so the GT out of the box is an amazing experience. You can already ride it super good. You can send it out on trails. You can do crazy stuff with just a stock GT. And also, I don't think it's fair to compare stock boards to modded boards. It's like saying. Oh, stock GT and the modded CBXR, WTF CBXR, which is better? Of course it's going to be the modded board, but you can't do that because you can also mod a GT to some degree. We're going to get CBGT soon, so extended, probably going to be extended battery for GTs. Uh, we're going to get um, WTF GTs. Uh, we already got GT Kush wide, so like it's all sort of coming together. Oh, we also have not GT bank bumpers, but GT UHMW bumpers, which is, which is basically the same thing. Um, like we're getting these new accessories that's been coming out for the GT, so you can't really compare a stock GT to a modded XR. You can, to get a stock XR to ride like a GT, first of all, you gotta change the tire. Like, you're not gonna ride the stock Vega. Right off the bat, you need to know how to disassemble your one wheel, and even just changing a tire. Like, a lot of people don't know how to change a tire. You'd be surprised. Now we're talking about this in the Vesk building space. Everyone here knows how to build a battery. <laughs> and yes, it might seem a little ridiculous that some riders can't even do a tire swap, but those people exist. And in the process of changing the tire, you also gotta upgrade your battery. So you gotta know the correct procedure to unplug your BMS from the battery, do all that stuff to get a CBXR into your stock XR. Um, after that, you need to add at least a back concave foot pad, um, which is pretty easy. But like, you gotta do all of these upgrades to bring it to a similar level as a stock GT. And especially for beginners who just like got into one wheeling, they don't have the time nor the patience to take apart a one wheel and figure out like which screw goes in where. They just want to unbox the one wheel and ride. A stock GT is the best board. Second reason, the GT is probably the safest board, safest one wheel. Um, first of all, it has an incredible headroom for pushback. So if you don't fully understand how pushback works, you can't push through a GT pushback unless you like really try. Like the best that I was able to do was like 24, 25 miles an hour. Although for Vesk, you can tweak the pushback level to be super low. Where on GT, even though you don't get to tweak the pushback level, it's set, in my opinion, at a pretty good level where it's, yeah, you don't really want to go above 20 miles an hour, but if you do, the GT, it's got your back. Third reason, GT is a finished product, and that's not something you can say about Vesk. So a finished product means, first of all, it won't blow up if you look at it wrong. Like my Vesk has, blew up because I screwed something too tight. Like that do happen. Um, but the GT, it's, if you just like ride it normally, it won't explode. Also it has features like water resistance. You can build your vest to be water resistant, but first of all, it takes a lot of effort. Second, the GT is basically water resistant out of the box. You can, you can basically ride your GT when it's pouring rain outside. So you won't like be caught in a rainstorm and then you have to call a cab home, for example. Simple stop is another amazing feature. I just had a friend come over and then I have to share a board with him. Uh, he jumped on my vest and then not having simple stop just like immediately freaked him out. For the rest of the day, he rode my GT because simple stop is just so beginner friendly. For new riders, when they're still trying to figure out how to balance on the board, just having a simple way to stop is a very good feature. And there is simple stop for Vesk, but it's super sketchy. Um, lights, another thing that you can configure on a Vesk, but the GT headlights is amazing. It's super bright. Uh, it's also completely built in, it changes directions. Like all that stuff we take for granted on a future motion board is not the case on a Vesk. Even if you built it, like really built it out, it I don't think it's as bright as the GT headlights. There are times I've taken it on trails where I'm just completely relying on the GT headlights and I was able to navigate just fine. Like I didn't have to have a flashlight with me on trails at pitch black. It was just able to, the headlights was like all I needed basically. Auto shutoff, another feature 
from a finished product, auto shut off is not implemented in Vest yet. So if you're like, if your battery is almost dead, you take it home and then you just like leave it there. <laughs> Sometimes the battery will drain to a dangerous level where it actually harms the cells, which wouldn't be the case for GTs because like after a few minutes, it just automatically turns off. This is also useful when you're like putting the one wheel in the back of your trunk and then you just forgot to turn it off. And then the next time you grab it, the board just like turns on and it spins everywhere. It gets really messy. Um, not the case for the GT. Fourth reason, you can use the GT as your only board, which is not something you can say about VESC. So if you only have one board and you're thinking about VESCing, don't. VESC building is a very involved project. Do not do this if your VESC is your only board and you rely on your one wheel for commuting or for if you just can't live without a one wheel because your your vest will eventually need fixing and when you like open up the controller to fix something sometimes that's a multi-day project and sometimes your vest will randomly just stop working and then you have to like fix it um gt basically don't have to go through that like yes my gt did die twice um every thousand mile or so but generally the gt i find to be a lot more reliable and people can ride the GT for like thousands of miles before they have to like really refurbish it. If you're sometimes if you want to just shut your brain off and ride, the GT might be the better board. Fifth reason, the one wheel app. You don't get the one wheel app if you're going vesking. So you completely lose that, including you don't get any of the odometer, the achievements, which if you care, I, I cared a little bit. <laughs> but since your vesk is not connected to the one wheel app, you don't get the achievements. You also don't get features like segments, um, ride tracking in the one wheel app, um, like these things you're going to be missing. Like basically everything involving the one wheel app would just be non-existent. Also for the GT, the amazing feature to limit charging to 90% to save battery. Um, since I believe that's a feature that a controller has to talk to the BMS. Like if you wire a charge only BMS, there's no way, no way this feature can be implemented. Uh, features like that that really saves your battery life, you gotta go with the GT to get limit charging to 90%. So the sixth reason is that when you're rolling up on a group ride, basically everyone's riding GTs. Since everyone are on stock GTs, if you don't have a hypercharger, which I highly recommend you do if you're going on group rides, um, you can just grab someone else's hypercharger when they're done charging. There was one time where I lost my bag, including my hypercharger, on a group ride, and I was able to just borrow someone else's charger when they're done charging and just like continue to ride. For VESC, especially if we're going uh, 75 volt or 84 volts, plugging in the wrong charger, like if, if someone who has an XR uh, saw that you finished charging and then unplugged your charger and then plugged it into their board, their board will blow up. Like you really gotta keep an eye on your charger and make sure nobody else borrows it or accidentally borrows it on your on group ride, which is not the case with GT. You can just like leave your hypercharger around if people wanna charge. As long as the charger goes in the port, it can charge. Uh, seventh reason, the GT Kush Wide is amazing. And in my opinion, it's better than the XR Kush Wide because the XR Kush Wide has the cutouts for the Flight Fender. I don't know why it's not there for the GT Kush Wide, but apparently it's, a, it's compatible with the Flight Fender. It just doesn't have the cutouts, which is amazing because I ride with my back foot scraping the tire and I feel that um, Flight Fender cutout every single time. And sometimes it gets pretty uncomfortable. So I love the GT Kush Wide a lot more. The eighth reason, Front concave, this is going to be controversial. So I really like the GT front concave. Having the front be concave, I think really is a good idea, especially for trail riding, because sometimes your foot gets knocked off and then if it's a flat foot pad, you really can't feel where the corner of the foot pad is. So you don't know if your foot is like completely off the foot pad. Um, but for the GT, I basically don't have to look at my front foot. If it gets knocked out of place a little bit, I will know immediately because the corner is at the wrong place and I can just shuffle my foot back. Both me and my friend tried both foot pad and both of us agreed that the front concave stock foot pad on the GT feels bigger than the XR flat foot pad, even though objectively it's the other way around because we're just able to feel where the edges are, where in the XR we're kind of sketched out by it not having corners, so we don't know where the edges are, so we don't know if our foot is completely off or it's still on the foot pad. So I think the front concave really gives me the confidence that my front foot is really locked in. I know it's going to be controversial, but some people, believe it or not, likes the front concave on the GT. The ninth reason, Stoke Life Services might not work on vests. Before you go like vest building, make sure to ask your local Stoke Life Service guys 
whether they work on Vesk. I asked my local um, local service guy, and then he said he doesn't work on Vesk. So when my Vesk fails, I have to be able to fix it. If you're not able to fix your Vesk when it fails, don't Vesk your board because nobody else will fix it for you, even if you pay money. You're not obviously not going to ship it back to Fusion Motion. Slow clock service also might not work on your board if your controller blew up, for example, if you don't and you don't know how to assemble a controller box, just don't vest it because when it breaks, which it will eventually, you're just left stuck with a board that nobody can fix. The tenth reason is, in my opinion, the GT has the best preset shaping. GT basically has three main shapings, flow, highline, and apex. You're able to switch back and forth between these shapings. So for example, I sometimes ride flow when I'm at a park and then I ride highline on the street which is, yes, you do get more shaping customizability with Vesk, but you can't really save specific presets for different riding conditions. Also, there's a surprisingly equal amount of people on all three of these shapings. So it's pretty much very evenly divided between Flow, Highline, and Apex. So I know quite a lot of people that ride Apex as their primary shaping. I personally ride Highline, and I know plenty of people that ride Highline. And there are many pro riders that ride flow as their main trail settings. Having three like actually usable settings is, in my opinion, amazing. And for everyone that rides XRs, pretty much everyone rides Mission. So it's like kind of not as diverse as GT, um, where, where you do get three very, very usable shaping at three different aggressive levels. So those are my 10 reasons why I think the GT still has merits. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the 10 reasons why I like my Vesk more than a GT, um, so it's the other way around. Both of these are amazing boards. You're not gonna go wrong with a GT. It's a, like, it's a very, very good board. People have been giving GT a lot of shit, but it's still, like, when you roll up to a group ride, most people are on a GT, and they're on a GT for a reason. Like, they pick the GT rather than the other boards. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Um, make sure to subscribe and like, and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.